here's some hints and tips on how to operate a lorry loader. Hello and welcome, my name's Paul McIntyre and uh, I'm an instructor with the National Driving Centre. So today we're going to talk through some tips and tricks on operating um, our lorry loader. So first of all we're going to unfold it and then we're going to carry out some lifts. Now this film is to run in accordance with the training that you will receive when you turn up on course. So I'm not going to give you every piece of information um, that you will receive when operating it. I'm going to give you some hints and tips to do this. Okay. The main, obviously, training you will receive, you'll get when you turn up on course, okay? So today we're gonna to be using our hook for this, uh, this demonstration, but we could also be using our brick grab, which we have, and we also have a clamshell. The basics are pretty much the same, all the, all the rules and regulations are the same, but that's what we're gonna be talking through today. So, let's get this uh, lorry loader out and get, prepare it for work. So first of all, I'll make sure I've got all my PPE, I've got my hard hat, my gloves, steel toe caps, high vis, um, and we're going to first of all set out our exclusion zone. So I've put my cones out to a maximum boom length of eight meters plus two meters for any load swing. Now I know you will never have this amount of room, okay, in ever in your lorry loader career, but we're in a training environment with a closed environment and we're going to be operating on both sides so I can put my cones out all this way, okay? So first of all, let's go and check the oil level to make sure we haven't had a catastrophic failure on the way here. These checks that we're going to be doing now is on the basis that I have pre-opted the vehicle this morning at the yard. I've then driven to this location and now we're going to be operating. So I'll check the oil level, making sure we've got sufficient oil, okay? Then I'm gonna be walking around the vehicle. I'm checking my ground conditions, making sure there's no hydrants, no drain covers, there's no slopes. Um, it's good hard standing, it's firm, it's level. Um, where my leg intends to come out and where I plan to place my pad, again, there's no drain covers, soakaways or excavations nearby. As I walk around the vehicle, I'm gonna be looking up as well, making sure we have no power lines, making sure there's no trees, there's no hazards, buildings, scaffolding, or lampposts nearby. Again, where my other leg is going to come out, I'm making sure again the ground is nice and firm, it's not cracked, it's not damaged in any way. We'll make sure our wheels are in firm contact with the ground and if I had air suspension, I'd be deflating that accordingly. I'll make sure there's no people around, no cars. If people were to enter the exclusion zone, I'll politely tell them to stop um, and stay away, okay? So I'm now gonna enter the vehicle and we'll engage the PTO. So I'm gonna use three points of contact to enter the vehicle, so let's do that. Okay, so three points of contact to gain access to the vehicle and now we're gonna start the vehicle. So we'll turn our ignition on, let our illumin illuminations come on and go out and then we'll fire the vehicle up. Now I'm going to engage the PTO. Now this vehicle's a little bit older than some of the ones that are out there. So we have a clutch, remember them? We've got a clutch. So to engage the PTO on this vehicle, we're going to depress the clutch, press the PTO switch, wait three seconds for everything to align up and then clutch up. And then the revs will come up to the manufacturer's recommendation. I'm now going to turn my lights on and my blinky twinkly lights on. Now we'll get out and get the legs out. Okay, so PTO is engaged and the revs have climbed up to where the manufacturer's recommendation is. So now we're going to get our legs out. Now this is where the people that come for refreshers can pick up a little bad habits. Again, we're going to teach you the correct way to do it. Okay, now obviously some cranes are a little bit different. Today's crane we're going to be using is a FASI F130, so that's a demonstration I'm going to be doing. So first of all, we're going to lift the safety catch and pull the bar forward. Keep your fingers away, no two hands at once here, always one hand at a time, so we're not going to damage our pinkies. Now, once we've released the safety catch, I'm going to do a little look around. Again, I know there's no one around, but that's not the point. The techniques and the tips we're learning here is the foundation for safety, which we will use all the time, okay? So a little look around, looking for people, animals, livestock, children, 
any uh, vehicles or cars or motor vehicles around. And again, just checking that the area is safe. I'm then gonna grab the lever and towards me to bring the leg out to body length. So a little look around and bring it out. I'm then gonna stop and have another look around just to have that double check. Now we're gonna send the leg out all the way to maximum. Because this vehicle does not have stabiliser monitoring, we have to bring the leg out fully to maximum. Once we've done that, I'm going to put my little diverter valve from the right corner to the left corner and just bring the leg down a little bit more. This will add in the pad placement. Now we're going to put our pad out. Now it's never directly in the centre because we have to allow for the kick. The kick is all this slack that's in the beam. There has to be slack in the beam, otherwise it would never fit in and out, it'd be too tight. So we're allowing for this kick. So we're just putting off centre because the leg will kick outwards, okay? So once we touch the pad with the leg, we're gonna stop looking at it, okay? Now we're looking at the crack here, this slack. We're gonna close up this crack until it touches, and then no more than 25 to 50 mil in an upwards direction about there okay making sure the leg is nice and tight and making sure our wheels continue to be in firm contact with the ground the pad as you can see is nice and central with the leg so we'll do the same the other side so again grabbing the pad we'll lift the safety catch and pull it forward again a little look around grab the lever and towards me to body length Stop, another little look around to confirm and fully deploy. Once the leg is fully deployed, we can switch the little diverter valve from right corner to left corner and bring it down. We'll pad the, put the pad underneath. Again, allowing for that kick. Always more than you think, always more than you think. Touch the pad, stop looking at it, there's nothing going on there. Close up the crack and in no more than 25 to 50 mil, about there. Again, making sure the pad and the leg is nice and true, nice and central, okay? Little errors can happen here with people operating. Like I said, touch the pad and stop looking at it. You'll see some people send these legs up and they're going all the way up and they're lifting axles off the ground. We're not gonna do that. Axles must remain in firm contact to the ground because obviously it's part of the stability plan and obviously it's where the handbrake is on that rear axle. So now we've done this, now I'm gonna to come to the rear of the vehicle and just make sure she's sitting nice and true. Just a little visual check, just to make sure that horizontal line is nice and uh, straight. I can confirm this by checking my little bullseyes, my little spirit levels and making sure that these remain nice and straight. So now we've leveled the vehicle, she's nice and stable. Now we're gonna actually unfold the crane, okay? So first of all, we need to lock the legs off. There's a little valve here at the back. Sometimes it's a valve, could be a button, sometimes even a key, okay? But some way of locking the legs off that they, so that they can't be accidentally tilted when we're operating the crane. Now we're gonna select our manual controls. For today, we're gonna to unfold the crane with our manual controls. Now up here, the FASI sticker tells us how to unfold the crane. That's a little bit difficult to see, so I've replicated it and printed it there. That one's a little bit difficult to see if you're a little bit shorter, so again, I've printed it here, okay? This hopefully is idiot proof, and all we need to do is follow the sticker and it will tell you how to unfold the crane. So, first of all, step one, lever four up. Step two, lever five down. Step three, lever four down, and this is gonna unfold the crane. So with a little look around, again making sure the area is clear, a good look around for any people, I'm going to first prime the boom up, four up. Now I'm going to send the boom out with five down. So again, a little look and five down. Because we're then going to be sending the boom over the bed, I'll rotate the slew and send it over the bed. A little look, making sure the area is clear. And then we can unfold that elbow, that second boom. And make it safe by bringing it back into that storage position. Just bringing it over the bed. And it's nice and safe over the bed because no one can get to it.
So now we've got the crane out, now I'm going to flick to remote control because it's the best and safe way to operate. So now we've got the actual loader out, now we're going to actually operate it, we're going to pick up our block here. Now, we've got the loader out, brilliant stuff, now we're going to operate by means of remote control. This is the safest way to operate because it gives us our distance, it keeps us away from the danger and it gives us a good all-round visibility. So let's get the remote control out of the docking station. Okay, so now we're going to pick up our block. Okay, so that the best thing, the first thing to do is get ourselves standing in a nice safe area where we can use that point and place technique, which we'll talk about on course. Okay, so getting myself in a nice area where I've got good visibility, good all round visibility, making sure everything's ready to go. So I'm going to turn the remote control on. As I do so, a little look around again for any people, any cars, vehicles any hazards that could impede our operation of today's use okay now i'm going to set my 25 degree angle on the boom this 25 degree angle is what fassi are using for this f130 it could be at 100 but it depends what the manufacturer recommends on the lifting plan okay so now we've done that the reason being for that is, again, on a refresher course, it does become very easy to set a higher angle. I'll show you a picture of this just here. And now we're going to be putting our crane into the operation so we can pick up this block. So again, turning it on, press once, press twice, a little look around, and now I'll slew towards me. Keeping it nice and slow, nice and steady. A nice smooth operation and keeping that off that that visual all the time around us then we can send our extension out we're trying to get our hook nice and over the area that we wish to uh, lift so over the center of gravity of the load not just over the center of the load once we've done that we'll stop isolate the controls always. Now I'm going to get my chain from the compartment. Okay, so we've got our lifting chain. Today we're going to be using this two ton single leg chain. Okay, now this is uh, authorised, it's in our um, report of thorough examination and I'll check the number. Yep, the number complies with the report of thorough examination within the vehicle. So I'm also going to carry out a visual inspection. We check it before and after every single use. So I'm just going to make sure the master ring is clean and tidy, making sure the links are clean and tidy, there's no deformed metal or any bolts or wires holding it together, making sure the safety catch is nice and clean and making sure I check the capacity. Yep, this is a two ton a lifting chain. Then I'm going to be checking my hook. Again, making sure general condition is good, it rotates freely, there's not excessive play, there's a roll pin in the crown nut, We'll make sure the safety catch is operating and the A pin is nice and secure. And then again, I'm going to check my capacity. This is a five ton lifting hook and check the number and making sure that number matches the number on the report of thorough examination, JL1WK. Then I need to make sure I know the weight of my load. This is a one ton block, so all our numbers are nicely matched up. Now I'm going to actually attach it. So we'll always, always put it on the hook first. The mistake people make is they put it onto the load first and then in some way attach it onto there. Now as we lift that load, that load's going to go into a spin. That's why we always, always put it on the hook first. Then we can let that hook get all of that slack and all of that rotation out and then attach it to our load. Okay. Now as I lift on the main boom, we're going to see this chain get tight, okay? I just want a little bit of slack in there just to make sure. And then I'm going to check the X and the Y axis to make sure this chain is going in a straight line. Remember, you might be standing here and that chain might look nice and straight, but to look on the other axis, it isn't. And we don't want to be toppling over our load or damaging it in any way. So I'll do that once I carry out my lift. So everything's nice, everything's ready to go. Okay, so now we're going to pick the block up and place it on the back of the bled. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to start the uh, operation up. Press once, press twice, a little look around, making sure my area is still clear. Then I'm just going to bring the main boom up, always lifting with the main boom, never the elbow. 
and just let that chain put a little bit of tension, just a little bit. There we go, then I'm gonna stop. Now I'm nice and straight here, but I will always check to make sure we're nice and straight here. And it looks good, it looks good. So we're gonna carry out this lift now, keeping your distance away from it, making sure we don't get too close. So again, press the button, turn it on, a little look around, and we're gonna lift up the load. Nice and slow, nice and steady. As it leaves the ground, we'll shout out test lift, making sure the load is nice and secure, it's not uneven. I know I can't adjust the center of gravity, but the principle is still the same. Now we wanna bring the extension in. Reason being, we wanna get that load closer to the actual loader. This will reduce the effort on the end of the crane and just reduce that pressure. So bringing that extension in, as the extension comes in, she might just gain a little bit of height. So I'm just gonna trim that height very gently just to keep it within knee height. We do not want to be going all the way up into the air. Keep it low, keep it low, nice and safe. As that extension's all the way in now, now I will slew to the body of the bed. As it comes over, not too close, but just enough. Then I'll raise it up, keeping that observation nice and high around us, and then slewing over to the center of the bed. Nice and gentle, nice and steady. A little stop, then we'll make sure we're nice and central. Turn it back on again, remember keep that observation and we'll lower the load down again, nice and gentle, nice and steady. Okay, so that's lift one done, okay? Obviously on the test, you're gonna be expected to do a couple of more lifts than that. So you're gonna be placing it on the front, placing it on the back, and doing some more lifts than that. But for today's tutorial, we're just doing these little techniques. So now I'm gonna go onto the other side of the vehicle to place that load on the other side. We will always go and visually check that landing area that the customer has explained to us, because we need to make sure that that landing area is nice and safe. So let's go have a look. So we're going to come around the other side and again we're going to check this landing area where we want to position that load again making sure it's firm it's level there's no uh, soakaways or excavations nearby i won't be placing anywhere near that drain cover there so again the ground is nice and secure our cones and our exclusion zone is nice again putting ourselves in a nice position where we can use our point and place technique and making sure we're we're nice and ready to go so settle ourselves in Turn it on, press once, press twice, a little look around, and then we'll take the strain on the chain again. The chain is nice and straight once it leaves the bed. Another test lift, test lift! Making sure that everything is nice and true. Now I'm gonna slew towards me, and as it slews this way, we'll then bring it down off the bed to keep that load nice and low, nice and low. And now we can send our extension out. Nice and steady. And again, because it's coming out, it's gonna dip a little bit. So again, we might have to just trim that height very gently. And that'll do there. So now we're gonna lower the load down, nice and gently. Let the chain go slack. And stop button. So now I'm gonna disconnect it and pack the crane away, ready to drive off down the road. So I've got to disconnect the chain. So we check the chain on the way on, and now we're gonna check it on the way off. So I'll disconnect the hook. Again, an inspection, making sure everything is safe, everything is clean and tidy. And again, checking the hook. Again, no damage during the lift. Everything's nice and clean and tidy. Good. Then we'll put our accessories away so that it's not a hazard to anyone and we don't forget it. So now our accessories away, now we're gonna pack the crane away, ready to drive off down the road. So in the opposite direction then, turn the crane on, press once, press twice, still keeping that observation nice and tight. We'll bring that extension in just so there's less crane out in the atmosphere. Nice and slow, nice and steady. And then I'm just gonna slew it round very slightly. It's not gonna be my final position, I'll do that when I change position, but I just wanna get the crane moderately in just so it's not out in the world. I'll bring my main boom up and then fold the elbow in.
just going to go up to the leg and then I'll change my position to a better place. So stop button, we'll change position. So now we're going to go into that stowage position, okay? Now I'm going to line up my two marks here on the uh, tower um, and once I've lined them up, I can then bring the elbow in and fold it away accordingly. So turn it on, a little look around again, lining up my marks. Lovely stuff. Now I can bring the elbow in. Now as the piston gets nice and short, that's where we want to be taking our time because we don't want to bang the boom in and damage it. So as I get nice and close and short on that piston, nice and slow, nice and steady, so that we don't bang it in and damage any valves or rams. Nice and steady all the way in till it stops. Lovely stuff. Now I can bring the main boom down for that stowage position. Again, keeping that observation nice and high. And again, nice and slow as it comes back in. There we go. So I finished with the remote now. I'm gonna put the remote away, okay? We don't wanna keep it on us now because if we're putting the legs away or anything like that, we don't wanna be leaning over and damaging any of the controller because these are very expensive pieces of equipment. So I finished with the remote. I'll put it back into its docking station so it can then go back on charge. Okay, so packing our legs away, first of all, we'll turn our electronics off. We don't need anything on now, we've finished with the crane and it's just the stabilizers we need to retract. Then I'll unlock my legs by turning the valve. Okay, again, this could be a key or a switch. A little look around, making sure the area is safe and push it away to put it away. Push it away to put it away. The leg will come up all the way till it stops and then we'll turn our little diverter from the left corner to the right corner and push it away to put it away. The legs are gonna come in fully now and I'm gonna test my secondary lock to make sure it's nice and secure and the leg isn't gonna go anywhere. Don't forget your pad. And we'll do the same the other side. So as we come round, again, making sure we stand the side of the safety catch. We always wanna see what that safety catch is doing, whether it's up, in, out, connected or not. And again, push it away to put it away. Push it away to put it away. As the leg comes up fully, all the way up. We can then put our little diverter from left corner to right corner and all the way in. Again, push it away to put it away. Once that leg is fully in, again, I'm gonna check my secondary lock. This is just a standard routine that we do every time. Now we've done that, I'm now gonna disengage the PTO turn off the engine, turn off the lights, and carry out my final checks. So PTO is off, engine is off, and my lights are off. So now I'm gonna carry out my final checks. Failure to do these final checks could result in us leaving our cones behind, us leaving accessories behind, us leaving the remote behind, okay? These pieces of equipment can be quite expensive, so we wanna make sure we've got everything. So first of all, any load that's on the back is secured. If we had the brick grab, I would have secured the brick grab by means of ratchet strap. I'm gonna make sure there's no leaks on the ground. Everything looks nice and clean and tidy. My load that I've just positioned here if I had paperwork, I will get the customer to sign that paperwork. Again, any load that's on the back is re-secured. We've picked up our pads. Don't forget the pads. Our legs are secured away correctly and the locking pins are in. As we come round, making sure the boom is nice and tidy, everything's nice and clean. Again, we've got no leaks or anything like that. Then we're going to relax our levers by getting all of that pressure out of the crane. Now, why do we do this? Well, we do not want that crane tense as it drives down the road, because if it's tense, that oil's gonna start pushing valves and seals, and it's gonna start weeping a lot sooner than you expect it to. We wanna keep this crane working for a long period of time, so we wanna keep it nice and loose, nice and relaxed. People think, well, there's no pressure in it um, when the PTO is not engaged. No, that's incorrect. There could be pressure in it. If we listen very carefully, 
There it is, okay? So there's that little hiss. So we know there's pressure in it. So we'll always relax our crane, making sure we get all of that pressure out. Then I'll continue to make my way round. Again, making sure I've picked up all my pads. There's no nothing left behind. Load is secured correctly. I'll double check that oil level. Again, just to make sure I haven't had any catastrophic failures or any leaks on the system. I'm then gonna bring all my cones in, pack them all the way, and then we're ready to drive off. So there we have our little tips and tricks to get this lorry loader out and just carry out a couple of basic lifts there. Obviously, when you come here, there'll be a lot more information to take in. I've breezed over a lot of the information that you will receive on course because otherwise this, this uh, video will be extremely long, okay? So I hope this has been some help. Um, these lorry loaders, they are all about working at the moment, okay? They're, they're, whether it's a clamshell, whether it's a brick grab, or with the hook, okay? And we can supply all of that training. I'll put a link in the description below about these courses, and that will give you prices and bits and pieces like that. And if you want to book this course, please hit that link and it will take you to our website, and then we can, we can get you booked in and get this license um, all covered off. So thanks very much for watching. I hope this has been of some help. If you like this video, please hit the subscribe button. Uh, we have lots of other training videos out there with regards to reversing, CPC, and general inquiries. So I hope it's helped. Please hit the subscribe, um, and good luck.